Hey, good morning, Mount Olive. We hope that you're having a great day so far. We pray uh, God's blessings upon you this Friday, especially as we get ready to launch into this weekend. Uh, pray that the cooler weather is being a blessing to you, even though it sounds like it's going <laughs> to heat up a little bit next week. So maybe that's something you're looking forward to. Maybe that's something you're kind of like, ah, we just we just want it to be fall. Wherever you are, we pray that God's word and his love and his grace sustains you in the highs and lows of this life. But today and in this moment, this is a high. This is a great moment because we're getting ready to launch into day 10 chapter or excuse me, challenge 10. I keep wanting to call them chapters, but this is day 10 challenge 10. We are towards the end of our week of being in the red letter challenge. So this upcoming Sunday, we're going to introduce a new theme. And so we understand that we may not uh, get through every single one of these devotions or there won't be a live devotion for every challenge. So this weekend, maybe you do the rest of the challenges of being on your own. So maybe it's tomorrow, maybe it's Sunday morning, however you want to divvy it up in your household because we're going to start a brand new challenge and a brand new theme this Sunday in worship where we look at <clears throat> the core concept of forgiveness. So day chapter or day 10 here in our week of being, it's going to talk about something that I think is really, really difficult for a lot of us in some way, shape or form. And that is the challenge of fasting of fasting, right? So if you've got your red letter challenge, I'm on day 10. So I'm just going to take, I want to point your attention to page 64, kind of in the middle right here. Here's this little blurb. To fast means to abstain from something. Out of all the disciplines we are looking at this week, this one might be the most foreign for us in America. All right. So fasting is not specifically tied to food, right? Typically, maybe if we think of fasting, when we think of fasting, maybe that means, okay, I'm not going to eat lunch or I'm not going to eat today or something to that effect. It doesn't necessarily have to be connected to food. Maybe fasting is abstaining from something else. Maybe it's the phone in your pocket. How much screen time do you have on social media sites? How much screen time do you have on games? How many, how many distractions or how many hours on YouTube do you spend every single day? The purpose of fasting, especially in the Bible and for us as Christians, it's not to portray how good we are or to, or to portray how holy we are compared to those around us. The purpose of fasting and the purpose that Jesus tells us in fasting is to rely on God and to trust that he will provide and meet our needs when we are going without. So I'm going to look, I'm going to direct your attention to uh, page 65, this first paragraph, this first full paragraph here on page 65. Jesus tells us that when we fast, we don't do it to get recognized by others. You don't fast to make others say, wow, that person's so spiritual. Or did you see Bob giving up food for a week? He must have such a great relationship with God. That's not why we do it. We are not fasting so that way we can look better or look more Christian compared to those around us. Fasting is something that we do for our own relationships with God. It's an exercise. It's a discipline which brings us closer to God and helps us realize just how much God provides for us. So it's a discipline. It's a challenge. It's a spiritual workout. You can kind of think about it, excuse me, like that. That's why Jesus tells us to wash our faces when we fast. Weird detail, but let's take a look at it. The Pharisees, so these religious leaders, they would fast and they would make their faces look disfigured and gloomy. So when someone noticed something was wrong, they would be able to talk about how they were fasting. They fasted in order to receive the attention, praise, and glory from mankind. Okay, so that's why the Pharisees are fasting. That's not what Jesus wants when he calls us to fast. He wants us to give something up. He wants us to give up something important and remember that he provides. To trust that God provides for us and meets and fulfills our needs. Not our wants, but that God provides for our needs. The things that he truly knows we cannot go without. 
And we know that when we depend on God, <clears throat> all of our needs are met. Right? And I think fasting is important for us because, especially in our culture, what is what is the American culture? You can have whatever you want as long as you work for it. Or maybe we live in a world, we live in a world now of instant gratification. Right? Maybe it's a matter of, oh, you see something you want to buy. Okay, go to Amazon, a couple of clicks, and it's on your doorstep in two days. Right? There's not a lot of investment for things. We, we don't necessarily have to work as hard for the things that we want. And I'm not saying we're not hard workers or you're not a hard worker. What I'm saying is it's a lot easier to go down the rabbit hole of I want something, I get it. And there's no real appreciation for the thing that you're chasing after because everything is just a couple clicks away now. It's easy to get caught up in a world with all of its distractions. And maybe for you and for me, maybe we've had moments where we realize I didn't really even spend time with God today. Maybe I didn't have any prayer. Maybe I didn't worship. Maybe I didn't have my quiet time with God. I mean, I have days like that. And maybe you have days like that. I'm not, I'm sure we're not the only ones, but when we look back at our days, it seems important at the time. But if we look at ourselves and we're honest, no matter how busy we think we are, there were moments in the day that we waste, that we easily could spend with God. So the red letter that we're going to take a look at is going to be in Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to take a look at verses 16 through 18. So I'm fast forwarding a couple pages here in the Red Letter Challenge. So these are Jesus' words, and this is part of his Sermon on the Mount. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do. I love Jesus. He's so snarky, and he calls the Pharisees out. I, I love it. I love it. For they disfigure their faces to show they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast... Put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. You know, what's interesting is that when we pray, Jesus tells us to do the exact same thing for the exact same reasons, almost because the Pharisees are doing the exact same thing that they're doing with fasting and they're also doing it with prayer. Jesus says that when the Pharisees pray, they go out, they make a spectacle of it. They go to a street corner, they go to a really busy intersection, and they pray, and they add these very long, deliberate, drawn-out prayers, not for the sake of that's what their hearts are earnestly desiring, but because they want to be seen and perceived as holier than thou. They want to receive that praise and that recognition from others. And Jesus basically tells his disciples to do the exact same thing when they pray, that he's telling them to do when they fast. Jesus says, when they pray, go into your home, go into a quiet place, go into, he calls it a secret room, and pray to your Father who is in heaven. So prayer, don't do it to be seen by others. Do it to have a genuine, honest connection to God, to speak to our perfect heavenly Father, not because we want to receive praise or we want to make a spectacle of ourselves for, uh, f for or in front of other people, do it because we're doing it out of a honest heart set to talk to our father to provide for our needs. So that's our challenge today. Not so much the prayer, but to take that mentality and that attitude and that spiritual workout of prayer and apply it to fasting. Go on a fast today. What's something that you can cut out either today or maybe it's for a couple of days. Maybe it's a week. Can you give up Netflix for a week? Can you give up can you give up alcohol for a week? Can you give up uh can you give up sweets for a week? What is something that is a distraction that you can that you can eliminate that'll ultimately drive you and force you to be more dependent and more reliant on a perfect heavenly father who provides for you? and who meets your needs and provides for your needs all the days of our lives. Let's go on a fast today. And you know, maybe it's we go on a fast today. Maybe we can continue it for two days or three days or a week or however long. Let's go on a fast today. And let's depend on our perfect Heavenly Father 
and our Lord and Savior Jesus to provide for and give us everything that we desire. Church, that's our challenge. We look forward to seeing God grow in us and have his way in us and that his spirit would burn in our hearts and draw us closer to Jesus. We just want to wish you a very blessed Friday. Hope that you guys all have a great weekend and we look forward to seeing you in worship this Sunday as we launch into our next core dis- core discipline of being a follower of Jesus. Have a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.